And as we were driving down, uh, a guy from the battalion I was assigned to picked me up in a jeep at Da Nang, and we had to drive the 20 miles to where my battalion was located. And I, I really was uh, disappointed that there weren't people standing along the road waving to me and, you know, offering me flowers and things. I really expected to be greeted as with open arms as a liberator, and it was as, it was as though I was invisible, it was as though I didn't exist. Um, and that was a little perplexing. Moreover, it was, it was, uh, they looked funny and they acted funny. I mean, just riding along in this Jeep the first day I got there. They lived in little straw huts and they had animals in their, in their backyards. And, and then I was there for about, on the third day I was there, this guy who had picked me up in the Jeep, uh, a corporal who I was ultimately going to replace, uh, he and I were in the battalion intelligence section. We were sent down to the uh, tractor park, the amphibious tractor park, to meet a bunch of detainees. It was our responsibility to take care of prisoners, and detainees were a classification of civilians. They were not combatants. They were they were uh, they could be detained for questioning, which is how they were why they were called detainees. Two tractors came in. They had a whole bunch of uh, Vietnamese up on top high flat topped vehicles about eight or nine feet tall and as the tracks wheeled into the park uh, the marines up on top immediately began uh, hurling these people off they were bound hand and foot so that they had no way of breaking their falls um, and they were old men women children no young men and I I couldn't believe these guys were treating these people this way. And I, I turned to Jimmy and said, I grabbed him by the arm and said, what are, what are those guys doing? These aren't, these are, we're supposed to be helping these people. Day after day, our patrols went out uh, and we ran into snipers and mines and snipers and mines and snipers and mines. I saw four armed enemy soldiers the first eight months I was in Vietnam. And yet our battalion during that same period of time sustained 75 mining and sniping incidents per month, over half of them resulting in casualties. This is for a unit of about a thousand men. But there was no one to fight back at. And then you go through villages and, you know, you get sniped at and so you call an airstrike in on the village and the whole village goes up. Or you go through a place and you search it and you burn houses and blow them up. Um, I began to understand why the Vietnamese didn't greet me with open arms, why they in fact hated me, but of course that didn't change the fact that, that my friends were getting killed and injured every day, and, and the only place that you could focus your own anger and fear was on those civilians who were there. Uh, and so it was this self-perpetuating mechanism. The longer that we stayed in Vietnam, the more Viet Cong there were because we created them, we produced them. What was going on here was not what I had been told. What was going on here was nuts. Part of what was going on is that I could not have made sense of what I was seeing and doing in Vietnam because I did not have a full deck of cards. I needed to have an understanding of the political and historical realities that brought us to Vietnam before I could make sense of what I was seeing. I began to acquire the other cards in the deck during the three years or so after I got back from Vietnam, but while I was there, nothing made sense because I kept trying to, you know, play this game with 27 cards instead of 52 cards and it kept not coming out right. And I didn't know why. All I knew was that it was nuts. And I could see that I was doing that. And I could see that nothing we were doing was having any impact on the war itself. You know, the funny thing about Vietnam is that I, I was getting Time magazine every week. It came in the mail. I could read about my war even as I sat in the middle of it. And I would read about what Lyndon Johnson would say and what McNamara would say and what Rusk would say. And I could look around and see that uh-uh, I don't know what war they're talking about, but that's not what's going on here. 
the war went on day after day after day interminably at the same pace no matter what we did.